Free UK, the network perhaps best known for obscure but oddly memorable marketing campaigns, has been up to really quite a lot of things during the year 2017, both behind the scenes and very much in front of it as well. And to start this video, I will talk about the kind of behind the scenes changes and improvements that 3 has made during the course of the year. At the start of the year, it was announced that 3 would be getting the so-called world's first fully integrated cloud native core network, which while that does have a surprisingly high density of buzzwords, does provide potentially quite a number of improvements to their core network, such as IP routing and management improvements, software defined networking and other changes to the packet core, which are all very crucial for the running of a mobile network operator. And this Nokia upgrade should therefore provide the ability for increased scalability as network demand increases over time. It was also announced that 3 would be working with Astelia and Mycom OSI for further core network upgrades in the departments of software defined networking again, virtualization as well as developing increased network monitoring for improved service quality. So to conclude, these core network upgrades provide a strong base for the transition to 5G services, although the Nokia deal in particular, it being called a world's first, does have the sort of downside that it does sort of intrinsically mean that it's unproven. However, I'm sure with Nokia's experience in network calls and their large operational base across the planet, means that I can't see it going particularly badly wrong. Going with Nokia for their core network does mean, however, that if 3 chooses, for example, Huawei or Ericsson for their replacement radio access network vendor, there will not be an end-to-end -end same vendor network layout where, for example, Nokia would be doing everything from the core network to the radio access network which again isn't necessarily a problem, but I imagine that having the same vendor from one end to the other end is quite beneficial in a number of ways. I will link to the sources where I found out the information about the new Nokia core network and also the Astelia and Mycom OSI information from because it is quite interesting to read about. And additionally, I am hoping to make some videos about the core networks of mobile network operators sometime in the future because it is quite important to have an understanding of how the core networks operate and how they're laid out to understand more about certain types of network failures as well as actually just sort of how, how the networks work beyond the radio access network layer. 3 is also on the lookout for a new equipment vendor to replace their Samsung LTE equipment and also a replacement managed services provider as well. I'm probably going to talk about the radio access network side of things where, like I said, Samsung currently is used for 3's LTE broadcasts. However, they are seeking a new vendor. And I think all the big vendors will be interested in a deal like this. So, for example, Huawei, Ericsson and Nokia Siemens Networks are the kind of big three with which I can see being especially interested and being likely to get the deal, really. Three also acquired UK Broadband Limited during the year, who operate a fixed wireless broadband network in central London and a few other locations around the UK. Now, this deal provides three access to a quite significant allocation of spectrum in the 3.5 and 3.6 gigahertz bands, as well as a number of other 
much higher frequency bands as well, which will be great for ongoing capacity needs, especially once handheld, i.e. mobile phone devices, support these bands at some point in the future. Network features wise, 3 started supporting native Wi-Fi calling on supported handsets during this year so that users do not need a additional app on their devices in order to make and receive phone calls over Wi-Fi instead of the mobile network. In Reading it is also as of late been possible to initiate Volte calls on LTE band 3 or 1800 MHz where usually this is not possible and 3 only accept faulty initiation on band 20. That is not to say it is impossible to use faulty on band 3 outside of Reading because it isn't. If you start a call on using Wi-Fi calling and then move out of the range of Wi-Fi or turn Wi-Fi off then the call will hand over to Volte on band 3 if band 3 LTE is the main 4G server in that area. In the next portion of the video I shall talk about masts, starting from small cells and then moving on to macro configuration changes. So in ultra dense areas 3 has started to deploy small cells in order to provide very localised capacity. The first of these started appearing around Stamford Bridge in London where obviously at the end of a match or before a match there are very large crowds of people who will be swallowing up a large amount of network capacity. Although I have also seen planning applications for small cells in ultra sort of central London locations as well where obviously capacity demands are very high. On the planning applications Band 3 LTE was listed, which is completely unsurprising when you consider 3's fetching portfolio and device support as well. And now it's time to move on to my two favourite things that 3 has developed during the course of 2017, starting with the 2100MHz refarm. In order to provide some background to this, I will first explain how 3's 2100 MHz is usually set up. 3 usually operates three 3G carriers on their 2100 MHz spectrum, which bear the UARFCNs of 10.564, 10.588 and 10.612. On sites which have the refarm of 2100 MHz, the latter two of these carriers, so 10.58a and 10.612, get converted into a 10 MHz LTE carrier, which bears the EAR-FCN of 99, leaving only 10.564. Like with the other LTE broadcasts on 800 MHz and 1800 MHz, this 10 MHz LTE 2100 MHz carrier is broadcast using Samsung equipment, well for now at least, with the remaining 3G spectrum broadcast using the Nokia Siemens Networks flexi stack as it would have been before the refarm. Now clearly an additional 10 MHz of LTE spectrum is quite a boost. On sites with band 3 and band 20 it represents a 50% spectrum increase and on sites with just band 3 it's clearly a bigger increase of 67% or 66.666 because of maths. So the bottom of the slide I have screenshots showing what happens. So the start off with the three 3G carriers broadcast on the Nokia Siemens Networks hardware which then goes to the 10 MHz of LTE 2100 on Samsung equipment plus the 10564 single carry of 3G on the Nokia Siemens Networks hardware. The next thing I'll talk about is perhaps even more fun and that's the perhaps trial deployment of supplementary downlink spectrum in the city of Oxford. The supplementary downlink spectrum is a 20 MHz downlink only carrier in the L band, which is band 32. 
as it is only downlink spectrum, in order to have an uplink, it needs to be aggregated with a primary carrier. In the case of the usually provided the screenshots and their device capability, band 20 was used as the primary carrier, and then obviously with the band 32 supplementary downlink as the secondary carrier. Now, clearly, with the supplementary downlink being around 1500 megahertz, it's roughly mid band spectrum, which does mean it has a great range on its own. However, the beauty of it is that the primary carrier that provides the uplink can be 800 megahertz, which is obviously low band, and therefore you've got a mid band downlink spectrum which is able to use a lower band as the uplink, which means that the range of this supplementary downlink can be really quite large. And considering it's 20 megahertz of bandwidth, that is a really sort of significant amount of bandwidth to gain. To conclude the video, I will now look to the future a little bit and discuss what the 3 network might do in the year 2018 or in the sort of near future around that point. So as we've seen, the supplementary downlink provides 20 megahertz of downlink spectrum and the ReFarmer 2100 megahertz currently provides 10 megahertz of LTE spectrum as well. So that's 30 megahertz of additional LTE spectrum if both of it, those are deployed on top of the existing maximum of 20 megahertz. So there is a massive amount of capacity to be gained, in, especially in the downlink direction, with the deployment of the technologies that I have just spoken about. The biggest difficulty with deploying supplementary downlink is that adoption of devices that support the band. 3's user base is composed significantly of value seekers who like to hang on to devices for longer than two years. And even modern flagships of today, by and large, do not support the supplementary downlink spectrum let alone phones from one or even two years ago. So in order for supplementary downlink to be a viable band to deploy more widespread across the country, modern devices have to be much better at supporting it, as in the really popular flagship devices really need to support the supplementary downlink, and people need to actually buy those devices, because otherwise you simply can't justify deploying a spectrum band that almost none of your customers are able to benefit from because you'd be better off using the money deploying other technologies and other other capacity approaches. Speaking of which, with their for LTE 2100 megahertz and 1800 megahertz, i.e. band 1 and band 3, they are great bands for deploying 44R, so sort of higher order MIMO which will then boost tele and for those again with supported devices that support 44R will then get a significant throughput increase as well. So they are very much technologies that I would appreciate seeing it during the course of 2018. And then there's all these spectrum that 3 acquired through the purchase of UK Broadband Limited, which they can then use of course for high order MIMO, massive MIMO, strategies to provide very significant capacity boosts to regions as well. And of course, there's also an additional spectrum auction coming up with which we can acquire even more spectrum. So the future does look quite bright for 3 really because they have a really wide range of strategies with which they can increase capacity and performance in high load areas really. So. They are quite an interesting network to watch and will be in the time to come. So thanks for watching this video about 3 in the year 2017. Really quite a lot's happened as you would have seen and I'm sure that this level of development is not going to stop anytime soon. Naturally, having produced a video about 3UK and their development during the year 2017, I shall also be making videos for each of the other UK mobile network operators and what they have done during this year. So I shall hopefully see you on those.